it's a tech giant Infosys. What we do know at this point in time is that perhaps Nanda Nilikani is going to be back to try and steer the ship through troubled waters. A final decision on this front is expected over the next 24 to 48 hours. What we also do know is that Nanda Nilikani has cancelled his uh, personal international travels and is in Bangalore. Separately, what we are given to understand is that there is a shadow of doubt on the future of uh, both the chairman, R.C. Shasai, as well as the co-chair, uh, Ravi Venkateshan. Remember, there has been the demand for the reconstitution of the board itself. To take us through uh, what he makes of the developments at Infosys, joining us now is Mr. M. Damodran, former SEBI chief, also a man who's been looking at corporate governance uh, codes in India for many years. Mr. Damodran, appreciate you joining us here, sir, on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by asking you of what you make of the developments that have taken place at Infosys. It's a very public battle between the founders and now the board of Infosys, which has played out through the media. What do you make of how things have panned out? Thank you for having me on your show, Shirin. Uh, this was a story waiting to happen. This didn't happen overnight. If you go back a few years and look at the musical chairs that they played when Mr. Narayana Murthy was brought back to the board, the then chairman moved mm. as lead independent director. Uh, a lot of other changes took place at that time, and you had a situation where there was an executive chairman, you had an executive vice chairman, and then a chief executive mm. officer. How he becomes a chief executive officer when there are two executives sitting above him in the structure, nobody figured that out anyway. So when you take mm. liberties with corporate governance structures, with board structures, mm. there is a price that you will pay. Mm. And you're seeing that revisited mm. in terms of creating a co-chairman's position, uh, which really undermines the chairman's role, then interpreting the role of a co-chairman as dividing the responsibility of board leadership between him and the chairman, the co-chairman having a very mm. active role in execution, which is the CEO's territory, so you, you have put in place a perfect recipe for disaster by ignoring mm -hmm. the basics of the governance structures, which is that the management executes and the board mm. just does three things, superintendence, direction and control. And I think over the last few years, mm. they got all of that wrong. Okay, so you're saying that uh, this was a story waiting to happen, that there have been several liberties that have been taken with the governance uh, structure, the corporate governance structure, and uh, you're not surprised at all because you believe that the way that things were playing out, it was a, a perfect recipe for disaster. But where do we go from here now, Mr. Damodran? Because uh, at this point in time, there is the possibility of Nandan Nilikani returning, perhaps in a non-executive role. Uh, there is the call for board reconstitution by former... Uh, employees and former CFOs uh, of the company like Mohandas Pai and V. Balakrishnan. Uh, you know, where do you see this headed from here on? I think it's important for the board to ask itself whether it has measured up. The answer quite clearly is no. Because the board at one level seemed to be pandering, and I know it's a strong word, to, to uh, the uh, requirements of one investor, call him founder, call him promoter, call him significant shareholder, whatever. But there seemed to be some kind mm. of a preferential treatment to accommodate the views of one shareholder as against the rest of the shareholders. If you go back again, because as I said, it mm. was a story waiting to happen. When seven or eight people got together and set up a company and you had an agreement perhaps, that you would, uh, you know, move uh, the CEO's position from one to another so that everyone gets a shot at the top position. You did not mm. factor in that you would go public, that 85 or 86 percent of your shareholders would be non-promoters, and then you move people. Yeah. And I've commented mm. on this earlier, that when Chris Gopalakrishnan was moved up, mm. the question to be asked was, by not by the promoters, because they had some kind of an understanding, but by the 85% outsiders, mm. they too have failed. 
question to be asked mm. was, if Chris Gopal Krishna was a good CEO, why did you change him? If he was a bad CEO, why did you elevate him to vice chairman's position? Mm. Nobody asked those questions. If the right questions are not asked mm. at the right time, clearly more difficult questions will be asked down the line. I think it's important. Uh, the Stakeholder Relationship Committee, and I've spoken about this earlier, is a committee that should have interacted with uh, stakeholders under the statute, and yet you had a mm. law firm which was your intermediary in talking to the uh, significant shareholders. Yeah. What happened to the Stakeholder Relationship mm. Committee? It was a role. It's tough. So I think the board needs to look at what it should have done, what it ended up doing, mm. and then each member of the board, mm. and while I say all of this, these are all persons for whom I have the greatest respect and admiration. I think they're people with accomplishments. In this particular role in the boardroom, did they measure up? I'm not so sure. They have the answers. Mm. They will decide who will stay, who will go. Mm.